Hi, friends. Max Elash here. On this episode of the Corpus Animus podcast, I have elite CrossFit athlete Travis Mayer on, and we talk about how he's broken up with me as a coach twice. Is he excited to have Sarah Sigmund's daughter as a training partner? His take on athlete sponsorships and social media. If he could only train to one song, what it would be, and his advice for those heading into the CrossFit Open. Before we get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we're on our road to 35K subscribers. And when we hit that milestone, we're going to give away a Black Zinc Rogue 2.0 barbell. Leave us a comment below letting us know if you'd like us to interview Trevor on an upcoming podcast. That comment is what's going to enter you into the giveaway. Once we reach that 35,000 subscriber milestone, we'll use a random YouTube comment generator on one of these videos where we promoted the giveaway to draw a worldwide winner for that bar. So all you got to do is be subscribed and comment below to enter. Train along some of the best athletes in the world at the sport of CrossFit. To get a free sample week of our current training cycle, head over to trainingthinktank.com slash DSGN. There's a holiday <laughs> holiday in <laughs> <laughs> <Holiday. You're scared. laughs> Wait, I don't get the joke. I don't either, but I thought he, said like he the, stayed at a hotel. Yeah, yeah. Night. The the Holiday Inn Express made like a whole series of commercials where they got somebody would come up and they'd be giving all this advice and they'd be like, Oh, are you an accountant? He'd be like, No, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night and oh. that's how it ends. So So you didn't actually say No, no, no. <clears throat> I'm just a bad comedian. I've never heard is that new? No, they're like from they're probably from twenty years ago. They're just old. So yes. No. I'm more of a Tombo Dead fan. Mm. He'll leave the light on for you. Travis, what Maxwell. I have some formal questions for you. Formal. First, what, what is, your, is your fave? <laughs> what's your favorite high school lunch? High oh, school we lunch? did that last week. I want to know. He didn't he probably didn't listen. Hey, did you, you gotta be right up on that mic, sir. No, I did not listen last week. Okay, so what is your favorite? High school lunch. It would have been chicken fingers and French fries. Mm. What type of we chicken? Had it. It what type like, of chicken nuggets on, did you have there? It was like the full chicken. Whoa, chicken fingers. Oh, chicken fingers. Yeah, like the oh, not nuggets. The full fingers. Oh, was, you, you get four of them. Upgraded shit. I like yeah. that. It was. Good. Oh, I think I had those. <laughs> yeah. It was like on Friday. They had like a, it was like the, most of the uh, during the week we would bring in a lot of stuff and then. On Friday, that would be like the only lunch we'd eat at school. Or they I had like a spice school. to them. I mean, yeah, a right. spice like a little seasoning. <laughs> don't they put that on everything? No. I the so next, I don't know. <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> the next question I'm about to ask you was this one of the questions you just came up with in yes, the bathroom? You okay. can only answer with one word. And afterwards, we can't talk about it anymore because this podcast has to stay off topic. Do you agree to the terms, sir? The podcast has to stay off topic. It has to stay off of that topic. Off of the topic you're about to ask me. Yes, true or false. It's a true, true or false. false. It's a true or false question. Do you want to accept? Take his hand. Come on, get in. Hey, do it like Predator. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Am I a better golfer than you? False. <laughs> you lied. <laughs> you <laughs> lied to the whole audience. Are you really better than him? Based off of how he played on Saturday, it's probably questionable. It's close. What? We can't talk about this anymore. Yeah, that's true. I screwed up my I screwed up my own question. I didn't consider that this man was a liar. I'm not lying. Yeah, you are. How many balls did you lose? Describe yourself as an athlete <laughs> in one sentence. Uh, I would say I'm determined. That's not a sentence. It's a word. <laughs> I'm like in the one word kind of responses. True, false. One word. What kind of athlete? Or one sentence? No, not really. I don't know. Yeah. Why don't I, you answer that? No, 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 no. Why doesn't you answer. he answer it? <clears throat> no, do you first and he he's him second. Um think about your whole career. Yeah. That's a that's a, a big question. That's, a, that's been a long time. There's been a lot of ups and downs of that. I would say an athlete that doesn't give up when adversity is thrown at them. Oh. That is definitely true. For yeah. for everybody that doesn't know, Max brought the adversity. <laughs> into every conversation <laughs> leading up to the games about if anything happened, adversity. It worked. Bad training day, adversity. It worked. Yeah. So Travis, tell us a little bit about your story. No, no, no. Hold on. Now you got to define what's your sentence for him as an athlete. Ooh. 
Travis Mayer, Travis Mayer, <laughs> he's a friend to everyone. He's not going to fluff my ego at all on any of this. I'd say Travis is a... Savage. Hmm. How do I say this in a politically correct way <laughs> that my audience does not judge me? What's the thing Kyle said at the end of the documentary? Oh my God. He goes, the, have you ever seen it? Yeah, you had to have seen it. What the, documentary? Yeah, was, it pro- du- was it the Dubai documentary? No. Um, it's it's part four of the 2017 Open. I think it's this one. Yeah, let's get to the end. I want to see. This, this is, is what Kyle this said? Is gonna Kyle get, who? Kyle Roof. Roof. This is going to get Travis is fired up. This is going to get me fired up? <laughs> Why are you playing things that get me fired up? Hold on. Because it's going to make the show better. Yeah, for sure. We were if this watch. is some stupid comment. Oh, Come this is a great piece of video, by the way. Everyone should probably watch it. I crushed oh, it. Why does it say add in four seconds? Oh, ads. Who puts ads on these things? How do they come Money up? Money hungry ass hoes. How do they come up so late in it? I don't know. Because he, he's fast forwarding it. I feel like every time you try to fast forward it, doesn't. I can't listen. hear him. Well, that's just, not Kyle just anyway. Move your- here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here comes Kyle Ruth. The composition. You should definitely use this in the video. Travis is the toughest pussy I've ever met in my life. <laughs> so tell us your thoughts after listening to that. Is that one sentence you would use? Should When we put out a, a campaign no. to increase your Not. social media, is this what we'll use? No. No? That was what? a long time ago. What year was that? 17? 17. Do you think okay. it was accurate then? Well, I don't know what he was referencing to. Yeah, Being to the games five times, like four times at that he point. he was close in 2013. Yeah, I mean, he let the whole Hold world on. know that. What one. was your sentence, though, if yeah, that wasn't yeah. it? Come on. Don't run from it. <clears throat> Answer. Look me in the eye when you tell me. One of the most consistent games-level athletes who's ever existed in the CrossFit Games realm, comma, but who could have been better and will be. How could he have been better? I would say that <clears throat> the two years that you didn't make it, you had the potential to make it. And there were a couple of years at the games where I think your headspace was not set up in the same level of competition that you've been your best at. Like sometimes you just Accurate. haven't showed up your best when it's mattered most. Correct. Which we're still working on. Cause I but still feel like the best might be yet to come of times I have. Yeah, I know for sure. So it's yeah. Yes. Not a perfect athlete. Yeah, no one is. I have a lot of room of improvement. Good. Yeah, but w- one of those years you went demo team, and wouldn't you say that you learned a whole bunch that year? Like you would have yeah. preferred being at the games, but... Yeah, I mean, I would much rather have been at the games competing, but I got paid pretty well and just got to go work out and have a good time. And I felt like from the side of seeing how much pressure everybody puts on themselves as an athlete was kind of ridiculous. Like you got to see it from a different perspective. Yeah, because usually I don't see that side. Usually I'm the one in there competing and putting that pressure on myself. And then I think it made me step back and realize you don't need to apply that much pressure and get kind of that pissed off about certain things that don't go your way and just kind of accept it as is and then kind of move on. And then the next year was your best year ever. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us your story. Start from inception. I mean, but I feel like. Start from the moment you were born. Inception might get awkward. Yeah. (laughs) Bad visual. Uh, <clears throat> what do you mean? I mean, I feel like I've, we've talked about that a lot, or at least I feel like on a lot of podcasts. Might, we might have got new fans. They don't know. You can breeze through some of the boring stuff. Like, I'm a guy from Georgia. And, I was born and raised yeah, in Georgia. Yeah, I grew up here, went to school. Do the cool stuff. Uh, like, how many grew up, played, laws have you broke? How many laws? Yeah. A lot. All right, good. Tell, how many times tell some been stories. chased from the cops? A lot. Good. Tell Sorry, them. mom. <laughs> um, how many malls have you been kicked out of? A lot. Walmarts, yes, all of them. Um, let's see, grew up playing every sport that my parents kind of just let us do whatever we wanted to do baseball, hockey, lacrosse, whatever it was. I took to motocross, then kind of spent most of 10, 12 years racing and riding. Got into being a mechanic for one of my best friends at the time who was a professional rider, then got to travel the world and go race and work on bikes all day, which was fun. And then Got out of that, found CrossFit, found out I was pretty good, stuck to that. history. 
And then I've run. How far into it did you decide you want to do the sport? Pretty quick? The first day I watched a video of Chris Beeler and some of the guys from the games. Like one of my buddies was like, hey, come try this. So we, he like showed me all these videos of them back on the dot com site back in the day. It was like the games, the Rogue and Again Faster, kind of like competitions in Tahoe. And what else was it? Spieler at the games. I feel like there was a few Spiller other Spiller and Kalipa video. Wasn't that a thing? Yeah. So just about, but do? I feel like just like the games stuff, like the clean and jerk at the ranch and oh. that stuff back yeah, in yeah. the day. So then I watched that and then he was like, do you want to try it? And I was like, yeah. So then we did Fran. And so I did, which is 21, 15, nine for those of you that don't know, but most of you probably listening do thrusters and pull-ups. And I used one fifteen and strict pull-ups threw up, fell in love with it. And then the rest was kind of history. I kind of figured out the same thing happened in motocross though. I launched my bike into a tree. The like, first time you were first on a time, bike? Well, <clears throat> the first, the first time, time I race. was ever like on a bike was like my mom. I mean, I was really young yeah, yeah. and then I grabbed the throttle and we took out a mailbox. <laughs> it was like the first time I was ever on one. Then the second time my buddy let me ride his and it was like a YZ 85. He had a track in his backyard and there was a tree and I launched right into the tree and I fell in love with it from there. So that sounds I mean, like I, my paintball career. I first time I went paintball, I got hit right in the throat. That hurt. Yeah, and now I've 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 never played again. We should definitely oh, see. Set but I up just a kept. Paintball. I kept yeah. playing. Yeah, I, or I kept doing the. Did you really get shot in the throat? No, or no, no, no. I really did get shot in the throat, but I, unlike you, did not continue my <laughs> illustrious <laughs> career. I, I said, "Fuck this." Do you think you had more potential as a paintball athlete than Travis had as a CrossFitter? Uh, no. <laughs> Yeah, I'd probably be pretty good at paintball. <laughs> I'm good so. at Halo. He'd be pretty world class. Halo? Halo. Well, you sit down during Halo. Yeah, exactly. But... He doesn't have to move. <laughs> That's what he's hey, sitting if you, down if right you now. camp at the paintball park, you don't have to move. That's true. What, What's your, no, he would not be better than me at CrossFit. What's your, the biggest highlight of your athletic career in CrossFit? The moment that you're like, I want to tell my kids about this even though you could tell them right now because they talk. Yeah. But <laughs> the highlight. Yeah. Is it still yet to come? I mean, I've definitely, I feel like I've had some pretty cool experiences and come on. What are but, they? I mean, I'd say like Dubai, like being at that competition, getting to travel the world, doing something I love. Like that's a lot of fun, but like highlights. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I feel like the games, first time I ever made the games, that's was a pretty big one because that was the main goal at that point in time was make it to the games. So. What year was that? 13, 14? 13. 13. 13. Yeah. That was, we really started off on too high of a note. For you? Yeah. <laughs> and then we had a great celebration dinner afterwards. Yeah. I mean, I took 18th back then. No, I meant like just qualifying. Like when you, you went so into that we shouldn't, have, we shouldn't have celebrated. No, I was talking about the wings. <laughs> How sweaty my yeah. head got during the wings. Max says can't eat hot wings without sweating. I can't really do much without sweating. Yeah. <clears throat> it was probably the first time I was concerned for his health. <laughs> we're all a- we're out to eat with my family, and Max is sitting there enjoying some wings, delicious hot wings from Cheesecake Factory. And I look over, and the top of his head is profusely sweating, like like something's wrong. Hold like, on, we were in South Florida. It, no. Okay, we're inside in the air conditioned cheesecake factory. In South cold. Florida, I feel like if this is like the threshold I need to be met to start sweating, you're living on that threshold twenty four seven. So like one extra finger motion and sweat could break no. out. But yeah. so then I look over and then I give him a paper towel and he starts stabbing his head because it was so much sweat. And then I got hot sauce in my eye, which made the sweat get worse. <laughs> and then it became a public shaming. Everyone was like, oh, look at him sweating. Oh I, feel like, I feel like eating hot wings is not the thing I would want to make fun of a man for sweating about. Like, <laughs> yeah, but I think it was yeah, it's, it's yeah. hot wings. Yeah. But not to the degree of sweating that he was. Look, I learned my lesson. I only have hot wings with close friends, so I'm never having <laughs> hot wings with you again. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Hey, so that means I'm a close friend. We had hot wings at the McGregor fight. Yeah. Mm. That was a good fight. Yeah. Man, those leg kicks. Had I hurt. won some money. Did you? Yeah, boy. I won money against Jake the other day. We should oh, yeah. put it at that. Yeah. What, you, you won money doing what? Jake, he bet me I couldn't beat him on the throwdown. What was it? 83? 83? Is that the last one? 83? 84? No, no, the one with Kyle right there. 83. 83. Yeah, that one. Yeah, this one. Jake, Mr. Jake Berman didn't think I'd beat a score, and I did. 
by a minute. Just Damn. to point that out. Kyle redid it and he beat his score by what? Five minutes or something. Yeah. Dude, I think the channel has got to turn the ads off. This is crazy. Can we do that? Yeah, we can. We can? Yeah. Huh. Do you have to pay? I mean, we no, just, you just wouldn't make any money. don't get paid then, right? Correct. In the comments, <clears throat> if you're watching this, because you can't make comments on podcasts. Half things. <laughs> Let us know if you think that it would make your life experience that much better to turn those off. Or if you can deal with the five seconds before you click skip ad, you realize how crazy that is. Like back in the day, you'd have to watch commercials in a TV show for like seven minutes oh, in between yeah. now, five seconds. You're, you're like, like, come on, come on. <laughs> Why I mean, have you? these. Well, so, yeah. I feel like our boys, I mean, any children these days, it's just at their fingertips. Yeah. So we'll sit there and it'll be like on regular TV, not like Netflix or yeah. Disney plus something. And then the cable. Like, yeah. It will, and they're like, what, what is this? Is a commercial <laughs> needs to just wait. <laughs> well, when's it going to be over? I, you got to wait. Yeah. It's going to be like, uh, old people back in the day used to be like, I used to walk to school two miles, both ways uphill in the snow. Now it's going to be like, oh, I used to sit for 20 seconds and watch an ad like, Oh my Thank God, God. <laughs> such a rough life. So bad. What's the most amount of money in a month you've spent? No, on no, no. Diapers? I had to watch. I had to watch a two minute untargeted ad. <laughs> <laughs> the most amount of money is spent on diapers in, in a, month? a month. Yeah. Cause he was, well, this was would be a, Boston coming up with our out fourth. of diapers by the time Thaxon, he Lawson. was already done. Yeah. He was done by the time Lawson was born. Yeah. Oh, so, so you like only have one, one diaper. Technically one person in diapers at a time. But Thaxon? He'll still be in diapers by oh, the time okay. this baby's born. All right. So for those who don't know, we're expecting our fourth child in uh, any day. It's it's a girl. <laughs> and it is a girl. And Travis her name is, is going to name it is not Maxine. Be named Maxine. There's not a chance. That <laughs> I'm, my that, child, I'm that predictable that no. you knew that's where that was going. <laughs> not a chance. Will my child's name be Maxine? How do you, how have you managed having three children and being a professional athlete? Cause I feel like on a more serious note, the most impressive thing about you that you've done. And I, we had a kind of quasi argument before you had Boston, which was your oh. first child where you were hesitant to call me on the phone because you I were knew. pregnant and you knew that I was going to be upset and think that you had no chance because I said, I didn't have a chance once I had yeah, a child. Yeah, I said, I just don't think that it's going to be possible. <laughs> and now you've had three and you have a four on the way and you run a gym. I feel and like I'm the, still going to the games. Yeah. And I've still done. I know. I, I'm super impressed. Hater. I tell people all the time that I'm super impressed. Keys to success. Give me your top three major keys and also do it in what's that guy's name? Oh, DJ Khaled. Yeah. Do it in DJ Khaled's voice. Yeah, so that I way know, we, I don't know his <laughs> voice well enough to do that. <laughs> DJ <What>? Khaled. <laughs> Uh, one would be have a very supportive wife Two, time management. Three, don't get stressed about pointless things that go on sleep and what they do. Cause it's chaos all the time. I feel like you get to come up with better keys. Yeah, I thought one, those were pretty good. I mean, one, you have to have a supportive wife. Well, so that, she allows yes. me to continue sleeping throughout the night because there's no point as she would say, for us both to be up and both be tired. So anytime we have the newborn, she will sleep in the room. And then she has a job too, right? Yeah. She's mm -hmm. a full-time school teacher. Um, but she'll get up, deal with the baby. And then I just still sleep. But now the open is going to be taking place during the point of when this baby is born, since it was supposed to be in October, but now they changed it that I'll probably sleep in the guest room while those things are happening. I thought you meant the birth. I was like, what? <laughs> no, 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 no. She no. said well, we're months gonna... late. The yeah. open, the open. Well, we planned it to as the open being in October, not February. Yeah. And then they moved it to February. So then she'll get up, deal with the baby. And then throughout the day, I'll deal more with them and help out. So then she can nap or sleep. Um, then throughout the day, I feel like we have a pretty good structure. They go to school three days a week. And then Tuesday, Thursdays, they're with me. Thursdays being a rest day. Tuesdays, I come in. My mom will watch them in the morning. I'll train for two to three hours, then go back home, wait till my wife gets home, train again, and then train again. So I feel like we've just kind of created a good schedule for us. I think most people just try to get, get too caught up in it. Like you have to be able to just go with the flow. And I feel like we've kind of done that. And some days I miss a session, but then I'll just make it up later at night or something 
doesn't go as planned. You just kind of accept it and move on. Like I'm tired. It's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but I think I allow that to just let me keep Was that going. a lesson you had to learn the hard way or you just kind of naturally were like that? No, I feel like we've just kind of naturally gotten into that because we knew from day one, like competing was my source of income and this is what I do. And well, I mean, not being stressed out. Yeah. Was there a period of time where you would get overly stressed about missing a uh, session because of, I mean, I really meetings? like to follow what's written and prescribed on my training. Um, sometimes it used to not be the case, but <laughs> now and, you like to check the yeah, boxes. And, yeah. I like to make sure that everything's checked and I'm moving on and doing what I can for that day. So when those aren't happening, I used to get kind of flustered and upset that I wasn't getting the session in, or I was having to do something at home that I didn't want to, cause I'd rather be getting my training session in, but then you just kind of have to accept that your kids are way more important and they're always going to be there. And that's what my priority is than fitness. And if that takes the back burner, it takes the back burner. But when I'm back in the gym, I have to make sure that the time I'm dedicating in the gym is better than what it was or better time management. And I think it only took a little bit for that to realize that my kids are way more important than <clears throat> this ever was or will be. So he just kind of, I feel like you got a lot better at dealing with the tired thing. I feel like you were whiny for a couple of years and now you're just kind of like whiny a little bit. Oh, kid, Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> now you just show up and do your thing. And if you really need an adjustment, you I say something. either make it or you say something, but yeah. I think there's also communication like with you. Yeah. Like we've always kind of, when I'm tired, I've told you like, yeah. I'm run down. I need a break. Yeah. Um, well, I think sometimes it's okay to push through and then other times you need to figure out a better approach. And if that's altering the sessions to where the strengths in the morning versus the endurance piece and the endurance is later, then you can nap whatever you have to do. But for us, I think we kind of have a good schedule now. All right, let's change gears. So we talk about Travis with the athlete hat all the time. <laughs> yep. Travis, the coach runs a CrossFit affiliate. Say your correct demographic is primarily say young professionals between 30 and 50 accurate as I don't know if that's young, if you're 50, but just say professionals, yeah, probably 35, 30, to 50. 35 to 50 is primary thing. We talk a lot about coaching elite athletes and program design for elites. What have you found is, are the tangible skills you cultivate in the gym to be a good coach doing what you do here? Or are you, are you a better coach or are you a better athlete? I don't know. Ask, <laughs> ask all my members. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I would try to carry over what I do as an athlete by being focused, dedicated to the same thing I do with them in the class. I try to make sure when they come into the class that they're having the best hour of their life, whether that's me dancing, joking, being obnoxious, mm. but they enjoy that. But <laughs> if you don't enjoy that, just <laughs> yeah. you can post it in wherever comments of this. <laughs> Travis but I, is so annoying. <laughs> I mean, that's probably true. That's fine. I'm okay with it. But I like to just get them excited which is the same way I feel like I do when I train. Like I love to come in. I like to change the music. I like to make it more upbeat and then just kind of seeing dance, put Winnie Houston on whatever it is, and then have a good training session. So I try to carry that over into my actual classes so that people feel the energy, they get excited, they want to do better. And then, so I guess kind of a- I got to call time out real quick. I've been training at seven o'clock in the morning every morning with Kyle Loop and your morning class, every single time the Metcon starts- turns on Dolly Parton, the same song, something in the kitchen. Do you know what the song I'm talking about? <clears throat> so Amy, who coaches our morning classes, took a request from the members in the morning, created a playlist and whoever in that class suggested that is probably why it's getting played. It is every morning. And hey. I keep thinking I'm going to go over there one day and I'm just, just going to break it. it. Just go change <laughs> or just it. turn it off. Just go change it. Just turn the music yeah. down. You guys have lost the right yeah. to listen to music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think she regretted that decision when she saw that was the suggestion, but then she said, people like it now. Wait, yeah. it's, is it just that one song or it starts well, so the playlist she, every time for yeah, sure. So it gave, yeah. She gave everybody in the class an option. Is it like a warm up song? Like that bring Sally up? No, no, it's, it's not. Like it's, like a, it's, like, it's like a full Dolly Parton I think song. it's Dolly Parton. I want to look it up. Dolly Parton. I mean, I kitchen. can ask her. Dolly Parton kitchen. I mean, what's wrong with Dolly? No, I mean, it's great, but God, every day we have to listen to the same exact well, what song. What would you prefer if you had only one song to start your morning? Ooh. Start my morning and I was training. Yeah, if you could change just, that song to be something else, what would it be? If I was just waking up or training? 
Train. No, no, no. Just that exact scenario playing out. You show up to train oh, with Kyle one and the, the one song starts the day every time you would I think pick. I'd choose Eye of the Tiger if I only had one. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Or there's like a Lord of the Rings theme song that's nope, just nope, acoustic nope, that nope, has no... Nope. Damn it. Mm. I go some... Yeah, I can't... This is what I go. Dolly Parton's... Oh, you can even hear it too here. Hey. See. Oh, is this the PYT yeah, uh, remix? remix? This is a really good remix. It's a good one. I, I'm, not, I'm not usually a remix guy, but this one's good. Yeah. Can you put that up next to the thing? Oh, you're, you're oh. already done. No, you're good. What's it called so people can go download it? PYT by John Gibbons. Somebody's going to have to know what song I'm talking oh, about. Oh, here it goes. Huh? Is this Michael Jackson? Remix, yeah. Man. Yeah, yeah. How do you guys feel about Michael Jackson? Well, I've got a Michael Jackson mask right here on my desk. Mask? For Dangerous. The album Dangerous. It's down there somewhere hanging. Yeah. Oh, oh, here. So I guess that shows how I feel. Yeah. He is a dangerous man. (laughs) (laughs) Have you seen the HBO documentary? No. No? Can we, just, have, can we avoid HBO. this fucking yeah, topic? Yeah, let's, not, play? let's not go down this. Let's not go down that route. I mean, it is interesting. I'll, we could say this though, that everyone still plays them. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like I've, I've heard some people be like, oh, you got to turn this off. But then here's the question. The next logical question is what age do you turn Michael Jackson off? Can you listen to Jackson five, Michael? So then I'll bring uh, Amy yeah. into this. So Amy <laughs> isn't a fan of like the newer stuff of that new what Michael do you mean Jackson? i don't think anybody's a fan of what if, no 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 yeah, i'm yeah. saying the music music oh so like at a certain point i don't know what it is because i put jackson five on the other day and she was cool with it oh but then when it was just the other michael jackson then it was like no yeah, but if this. you put on jackson five and you're cool with that then you have to be okay with um uh the dad beating him mm. yeah so then yeah. you're supporting child abuse some abuse, abuse. yeah, yeah. yeah. so you know pick your poison <laughs> yeah it kind of well, whatever. Yeah, well, you, just, you just, said avoid this. Avoid. Fine. Yeah. Fine, fine, fine. Next. Next. Who brought this up? Not Next. me. Yeah. I'm going to get it. Did, oh, because yeah. I said I'd choose that song yeah. to like get fired up. Yeah. That was get you fired up? Just kind of like, no. Like if it you were to come in every remix. day, yeah. if you were to come in every day, like I could deal with that being on every day. Yeah. Like you said, I had the tiger. We should have a mental challenge of the year where we play the same song on repeat all the time. You can only, it's basically like, torture you know when they put people into a torture thing well it depends on the, the song. song have you read the studies though that they're like if you listen to an album or, or a set of songs on repeat while you do like um like monotonous work so stuff where you're not really having to think yeah. critically but you know it's just kind of going through the motions that kind of stuff that if you put on like an album that it like really increases productivity you ever done that i've heard Play that on it, repeat it depends on yeah I, i've listened to the same song on repeat for like months i always time. do i don't know if it was song. When, I it was like it, a, when i find a new song i do that often yeah you know what cd i did that with was uh 50 cents first album that came out <laughs> I, had, I was gonna say i hope it's not the second one because no, that was no. a, just a turd. it had so many good songs and i feel like it was that was hummus just a bar peak. what was your favorite track on his first one hummus bar hum- hummus <laughs> bar. <laughs> I Salad like hummus. Bar. I've Salad never bar. had hummus. Hummus, bar. hummus a bar. <laughs> oh, hummus a bar. Hummus I'd be bar. better at the hummus bar than humming bars. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet you would. <laughs> Let me pull up the album. So I, uh, yeah. I always like that opening track. I Which feel one like is I that? Don't remember off of this. Hummus a bar. Yeah. Oh, that is good. Yeah. Travis, ask, Axel. ask Chris a question. So, were I you into fifty or like? Did you have like a gangster rap era of Travis? Uh, I mean, I, I like everything. No, that's a no. No, but I mean, I do. I really like a lot of stuff. I mean, gangster rap, like what, like 50 you know what? cents, 50 yeah. cents considered in that. Yeah, man. The dude was shot nine times and then that's true. Was that's valid. Like, uh, he, or at least he said he was a drug dealer. It could be a marketing ploy, but I would <laughs> imagine that. <laughs> well, that's that. funny to find out some of that. Like, yeah. what is it? Ice cube was like, uh, one of those guys was like super well off and not in a gang at yeah. all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Tupac went to Juilliard. Oh, I know like Three Six really- Mafia. I mean, not that like Three Six. So I'm from Memphis. Three Six. They went to the Christian school. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, See? like the private private school. Yeah, but I don't know. I think Many Men was my favorite. Oh yeah. All right, Chris. Here's a question: one. Who's been your favorite person on the podcast? My favorite person on the podcast. I mean, if I count, then it's got to be. No, Ooh. it doesn't. Max doesn't count. I don't know. What? He, yeah, I mean, it's all people here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's know. not like we've had external. Oh, but guests. you've had a few people that. 
outside of this? No. No? Okay. Come on, Out John. of the people inside here. <laughs> Who who is basically, it? Who's your favorite training thing to make it for you? Uh, <laughs> I, I, it's not Kyle circle Ruth. Circle back to me. No, it's not Kyle Ruth. <laughs> it's not? Nah. Kyle, no, it can't be Kyle. Who's your favorite training partner of all time that you've of had all time? For, in CrossFit? <clears throat> mm. I'd probably say Ant Haynes. Ant Haynes, yeah. Because he was the only one that survived the long haul. He survived and then... We he, called Ant Haynes the cockroach. He just came in and... <laughs> What's just, his background? What unkillable. Rugby. Ant? Oh, his... I Dad's from London and his mom's from Hong Kong, right? Yeah, I think it's think? Ang- something like that. I think well, that's British, where they're from, but what British like, and Chinese? I think. Oh, okay, I think it actually is. I'm not 100 yeah, percent positive. I don't know, but 100%. yeah, but he's I'd like a, he's he like an Aquaman looking guy. He just yeah. Who's that guy who plays yeah, Aquaman? Jason Momoa. Yeah, like he looks like he could be Samoan. Is I'd Jason say- Momoa Samoan? I don't know. I think yeah. he just took his last name. <laughs> 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 How many things have I said that are going to offend people in this podcast? Enough. Yeah. <laughs> I'd probably say him. What do Let's you think see. about the idea of training with Sarah? If she comes down here. Good. I mean, we've had one experience of training in person for, what was that a month? Not yeah. a few well, weeks. Week? I think it was only like 10 weeks? days. Oh. I think. Cause it was, I think it was a little bit before, but it was leading into the open 17. The yeah, it was one. the 17. Open, oh, maybe it was just like, it. yeah, you and her just doing that one week. The first um, week. Pretty good. I mean, we, I feel like it was cool to see at that point in time, like the difference of someone else higher level to train with. Cause then you just saw what else they actually put into the actual work and what they're trying to accomplish. Um, so I think for me, it would be a good kind of environment change. Cause I know she'll push me on certain things and I'll push her. So, and I think it's different cause you're not male to male competition where you're like, secretly always like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to tell you any secrets or share anything. Cause you don't want to help them where with a female, you're kind yeah. of more open to it because you know, you're not at the end of the day competing solely against her. Yeah. It would be more like, Hey, what'd you do? How'd this break down? What was this for you? Maybe okay. that's why Matt and Tia kind of, yeah. I mean, I think it is. I uh, think a do lot you think of that. that's the formula. Cause there's also like, uh, I think Justin Kotler has like Carrie Pierce, Danielle Brandon, and Bethany Shadburn all training together. Those are three girls. We've had, you know, a bunch of elite competitive men in the same seasons. Do you think it's the formula is day to day training partner being male, female at the highest level is more effective? I think it could be because you know, like, yes, you gain that stuff from guys and you can kind of see how they're pushing and doing it. But I also think sometimes like percentages for women to men, like they get, they're able to move faster under certain weights than we are. And I think that also like then pushes you to go faster and try, cause you're trying to not lose to her or yeah, whatever yeah. happens. So I think, I mean, I think from when she was here, it was probably, I started getting like even more dialed in than what I was. Cause I knew she's like super intense. Yeah, like when she, she came here it was like, man, this girl's like on a whole nother level than I feel like anybody I ever trained with before then. Um, <clears throat> But maybe that is. I don't yeah. know. I'll be interested to see. I mean, I've obviously seen a lot of videos and stuff of her training, but I remember it was profoundly different when I saw her train in person. And I was like, oh, that's what intensity <laughs> looks like. Yeah, what was, was so probably, profoundly different? I don't know. I think it was even just like warming up, like yeah. headphones are on, like a like it's time to train. Like It's just focus. Like I think there's people that it's like, I'm here and I'm going to get every single ounce of performance I possibly can out of yep. myself. And that's what I'm here to do versus like, you know, show I'm kind of here to out. fuck around. Talk that's like around. me when I crack an egg in the morning, I'm like, come on, every <laughs> fucking piece is coming out of this bitch. You waiting for yeah. all the drips to yeah. come out. Yeah, I get that. I don't know. Maybe that's the secret. So yeah, we'll, see. we'll find out. Is she moving here? COVID. Uh, COVID. COVID. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. Come Ugh. on. We've already. Wasn't it the 20th? It was supposed to be lifted. I think the, change in administration, change the rules. Got so it. we'll see. Mm. But we yeah, we'll see. see. I think it'll be a good addition on site to train with her. What do you think about the new format? I mean, I'm, I haven't looked too much into it, to be honest. I Do you even know what you're competing in this year? You Wait, just why, trust, why haven't yeah. you done that? Because he just says, well, no, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I think partially because so much changes 
within That's fair. our world pretty quickly. And so much was unknown. No one knew what was actually happening. Like even right now, you don't know what's stage three, where that's happening. They say it's in person, but I don't actually think it's going to be in person because of COVID. It's going to be virtual again. The games will probably most likely be virtual again. The games? No, the, the, st the stage, stage one would be semifinals. But the same thing, like what we kind of did last year where it was like, okay, we can only get five people actually to. Would you be down for that? Or do you want it to be? Yeah, but I, I think part of that is knowing ahead of time how it like actually. What the structure yeah. is. Yeah, because even right now it's like more to come, more yeah. to come where it's like, okay, so the open. Well, you at least take they're the giving us something though, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not disagreeing with that, but that's why I haven't necessarily dove into like what's actually happening. Like first stage, we know we have to place top 10%. Okay. Second stage, what's happening? So they haven't, and then, oh, sorry. you know, like what, how many weeks is it? What are the workouts going to look like? Is there going to be any sort of running? Like what actually is going to take place after that? I think that's why I don't, I feel like this is one of those things, like even when it's like my kids and stuff, like I'm not going to stress about it or worry about it till it's actually here because it's not like I can change anything or worry about it. I'm just going to train as hard as I can now and get better for open style stuff because that's what it's most likely going to be. I stress and worry about it. And I do some that's of that why. on behalf of Travis. Yeah, I All don't right. need to. It's for, for you. Yeah, yeah. Thinking and doing. Prediction. So they haven't put out uh, prize purses for the CrossFit Games this year. Is it going up or down? I would say up. Up? 100%. How much? What's the winner going to take this year? 400. What are you going to take this year? 400. Nice. I like it. That was quick. No hesitation. What else, Chris? You guys what else should we Actually, ask I do man? have one question. You can veto it if you want, because I don't know if this is like a weird thing to talk about. But so <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the fact that you're already yeah. referencing it like yeah. that isn't going to. I'm just giving you an out, man. Make sure you keep your pants on no matter <laughs> yeah, what he please. asks. <laughs> so professional athlete, you have to, you don't have to, but there's the whole idea of, you know, everyone wants the extra time to train. So to do that, you need to have less of a job, even though you have your gym. So that's a job. But then there's athlete sponsorships. What? has it been like as an athlete trying to navigate that world? And are you a fan of it? I would say I'm not a fan of it because I think so much solely relies on social media nowadays. And that was something I remember early on, we were just like, there's no need to focus on that. Just compete and be ready to win and do the best you can. And sponsors will come after that, but it's slowly the way the sport has changed. And I think in every sport, it's more, if you have visibility from a social media side or, whatever it is on social media, however many followers you have, that seems to be all most of the sponsors seem to care about, um, which is kind of annoying. Because it's like a paid by follower or? Yeah, I mean, I feel like every deal is kind of different. Um, I mean, that's how almost all of them gauge the value of an athlete basically at this point. It's just like how um, much, how much interaction are you going to be getting? Are people going to be seeing it? And to me, like where it used to be like, all right, you show up, you perform, that's all they care about. But now it just seems to be like, what's your social media like? Yeah. Like I honestly would rather get off of social media just cause I think it's pointless and I waste time on it. Um, that's not productive, but I can't just do to a sponsorship reason. Would but, you think it was productive if you were making six figures a year from sponsorships? Would you, I mean, be I like, still oh, don't okay, think it's I'll productive because I still think you should have in-person relationships where I think a lot of that, even when you go out and sit down and watch, like everybody's just sitting on their phone, not having actual conversations where I think those need to start happening and continue to happen. Um, you think that's just social media? I th what, do you, what else do you think when people are together, they're doing on their phones? Sometimes, I don't know. I don't it's know. frustrating as hell. But it's just annoying. Like yeah. you're just sitting there and then we would be talking and then you would be like this. And then you're going to hop on your phone because you're going to feel like I'm not paying attention. And I think social media is a lot of that because people, you just see people doing this or swipe yeah, left yeah. or right, whatever it is. Um, I guess the, 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 what do you call it? Like the serotonin bump you get from just a notification period. Yeah. Even if it was just like, <laughs> it just sent me a calendar alert. There was something that went ding and I need yeah. to check it. Yeah. yeah. I, so I took a break from social media. I archived all my old posts and I didn't do it because I thought it was the devil, but yeah, I'm not saying it's the yeah, devil. I just think, you should have more in-person interaction. Yeah. And I think it takes away a lot of people's time, but it also provides people a lot of other avenues of making money, providing for their family, whatever it yeah. is. Some people genuinely really love doing it. Yeah. It yeah. sounds like you're like not that. Yeah. So it kind yeah, of sucks I think that it's just not my, uh, I'm not as good at it. It doesn't come as natural. Sure. Where like like Noah, loves Noah it. is really good at it. 
you could like ask him something and he'd be like, oh yeah, make a comment like this. I'm like, oh yeah, that's pretty yeah. good. That's clever. And he likes doing it like genuinely, not because he has to, he yeah. like is into it. So yeah. sometimes I think for me, I, I don't want to say it's forced, but like things I would want to say, I'm more hesitant on saying just based off of reaction and just like not a road I necessarily want to go down, whether it's like making fun of Max or something like, even if that's not what I'm trying to like, it's just, that's our banter here. But when that would come across in social media or something else, people are like, man, this guy's losing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people got mad at me. Cause I used to bust your chops in the Yeah. Videos. But I feel like that was yeah. just like how our interaction was. And I think with social media, it's like you say one wrong thing now and you could be banned for a lifetime. Canceled. And I know you once this Michael sponsors. Jackson thing gets out, we're screwed. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, oh, he once, listens to PYT. <laughs> but it's like, once you, I don't know, just there's so many fine lines now with how social media is with sponsors, with everybody else in the world. You like everybody gets upset within yeah, yeah. five seconds of one post, even if it's not meant to come across like that. Like even, I, yeah, I I'm planning on going back to mine. So you but, archive yours, you were saying? Yeah. Yeah. So I archive mine and I plan on going back. But one thing I recognize when I, and I always had a little bit more of a professional approach to it. I thought about, okay, I created training think tank to not be part of the brand or not to be the visible face of the brand, but there's a lot of other brands and having a personal brand is really supportive to having an, another brand. So I'm just going to put a little bit of myself out here. And I thought about it like an obligation. So I said, I'm going to sit down for 20 minutes almost every day and just write something, take a picture that relates to what I wrote and put it up there. And over the course of doing that for months, I guess I developed a habit, which I didn't really realize. Once I archived it and moved it off my main page of my phone, I would just be sitting and take out my phone and like go to click where the Instagram button was on my phone. And I was like, man, that's crazy. Cause I was completely subconscious and I like, don't even really want to look at it. I just, my yeah, brain just, like, went scrolling there. Scrolling and looking you're like, what am I doing? The first two days I probably did it a hundred times. It, is and crazy, then it, just, right? it, it just broke away. So it's not like a, it wasn't like an addictive behavior that I think is so, or maybe I just have a, a an okay. But it's crazy but, that it but, even had the power to do that. Yeah. And, and had the power to do it for something I didn't really like. Right. It's not but like it's like, something that yeah, I'm yeah. like, Oh, this is like a cookie or something. Yeah. Like, it's yeah, just but I feel like, like you at least are smart enough to know to stop. Like where I think like teenagers these days and like oh, kids gosh. these days, like it's literally, that's yeah. all they know. That's all they do. But Lauren even says like when the, she asked kids like career day, like, what do you want to do when you grow up? Like TikTok, YouTube, yeah. like that's yeah, yeah. now yeah. the thing of being a career. And you're like, what? Yeah. But then all it is is just sitting there being, what, social um, media. what grade does she teach? K to fifth. She teaches the health and fitness class. Are they all on yeah. phones or is they don't have phones yet? I mean, some of them do, yeah. but not like in the classroom at that age. Yeah. <laughs> how did, well, how many times, how many this? times have you dumped me as a coach? Dumped you as a coach? Yeah. I mean, smooth not transition. Like, not like a full dump, but half we've dump. Not, we've we've, we've had half breakups. We've, it, we've had half breakups. Two, two. What was the second one? Oh, gosh. What's the first one? I'd say the first one was when I took over my Your training leading into the games. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that was just for like a... That, that was, was like that was four for weeks. Th for a month. Yeah. What did you primarily do during that? The stuff I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was actually a decent strategy. I mean, it worked. It was my best finish of the game. No, it was second best. <laughs> took 10th. No. Yes. No, my friend. Yes. That was not the year. Yes, it was. It's the year Ant was here. I took Oh, tenth. you took 12th yeah. in 2019. Yeah, we tied on the Yeah. The, the point one thousand. Yeah, earlier I think y'all said 10. Yeah, yeah. We said 10th. You took 12. That's where the cut where was the cut line? 10? That year? 10 to move in. So then me You and Cole were like tied. really tied. And then if I was one one thousandth of a second faster, I would have made you it. You would add your five points and made it to yeah. top ten. All right. The yeah. second one was Brandon and Mike, which now we're okay. kind of co-coaching. Well, okay, Travis. yeah, that, but that's not. It was a little bit of a breakup. No, it was like I a, think it, it was. We so, became an open relationship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all are gonna have to do some explaining. Yeah, so, so I think what was that after? I feel like something happened, and then I was just kind of like Travis. Well, I think the whole thing that started it was the COVID year was pretty tough for you just in yeah. general. Yeah. I in mean, in general, I just was tired. I was kind of burned out. I just wasn't enjoying it. The unknown, the thing it's happening. It's not, I wanted to yeah. do more projects at home. I wanted to like build things. I was having more fun doing that than I was in here. Um, and to add to that, I don't really do that well with that. 
as a coach, generally I'll start to get disconnected as well. Cause I'm into, we're both into the, or I'm into athletes that are trying to get as good as they possibly can. And it's hard for me sometimes to empathize, even though I understand I can't do what he's doing. So I think that whole year was just a tough transition process. And it was after the games stage one. Yeah. Or stage two. What? Well, like after the in-person games. Yeah. Yeah. After the, like I knew yeah. going into it, training was not where it needed to. I skipped sessions. I just was tired. I yeah just didn't want to really be in here. I was just kind of burned out. And then when you have a competition like that and then you get demolished <laughs> like that, it's just embarrassing. Um, and then you kind of know like, what was the point of even attempting to do it? Cause then it was almost like I'm not saying it was worse, but it then kind of lit a fire in me. And then I think coming back into this, we kind of took some time off. I think it was like a month off. And then did it instantly light a fire or did you have some doubt? No, it's pretty instant. Okay. I so feel like immediately, like as the, it's happening and I was like, Oh no. Yeah. Like I can't like granted that was the best I could do with what I, with, with where your fitness was, with where it yeah. was at. Like, I don't think I could have physically done anything else. Like my whole body went numb on the first workout. I think the like, only thing you could have done threw up everywhere is not attempted as many front squats. That'd be the one thing I feel yeah. like that just took maybe a little bit out of your nervous system. Yeah. But, so, but from that, it was like, still just take the chance. Cause then if it happened, it happened. But after the first one, like was fired up, but that was really just all my body had for all of the workouts, like being able to do handstands and I can't physically do it. I'm not used to that happening. Um, it's used to like, okay, breathing or something's a limiter where like my body physically will not do what I want it to. You got to feel a Metcon in my body. Yeah. And I don't like it. So instantly <laughs> during while you were doing those pieces, you were like, I got to do better next time. Yeah. I just knew. And then I think it was like seeing the leaderboard and then just being frustrated with what I knew I was supposed to be doing leading up to it and not doing, um, led us into then this year, I just kind of wanted to change things up. And I think we both kind of were at the same point of like, we need to change something, but what is that actually going to be? Um, so we started working with a mental coach, um, both of us technically, um, that then just allowed us to like start talking about different things that we need to do to improve. And with that, then, we came up with the idea of I wanted to see if Mike and Brandon would team up with Max and then we all three kind of or them write yeah. a program. You were really the catalyst to for me to start thinking about leveraging so Mike basically what happened structurally is basically I would continue to see the big picture. Mike would write all the strength progressions, Brandon would write all the CrossFit progressions, and then I would write all the movement and cyclical progressions, which at the time was pretty low stress. It was basically just uh, base level gymnastics and low intensity endurance work. Cause we were in the off season. And that's our design crew anyways. So Y'all already yeah. been yeah. doing that. And so we've been working together and then slowly that became like, Oh, this system is actually more effective than me doing it myself. Cause like Mike thinks about weightlifting more specifically to the sport. Yeah. than I do because I think about it in terms of like all the complexity of ensuring you're good at clean capacity, snatch capacity, hang snatch. And sometimes in the process of doing that, I'll forget to run linear progressions on just basic squat strength. Yeah. So Mike went through a squat progression. I think over the course of 12 weeks, you went from what, 445 to 490 in 12 Starting weeks. Out, yeah. So yeah. we based it off 445 at the beginning and then yeah. ended at 490. Yeah. And so there was a- With three attempts at 500. I'll, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which were- <laughs> Never mind. Anyways, Move so on. that was kind of like the structural change. And then we just kind of focus on more. I mean, I'm, I was just joking. We, we still work together. We meet every week and talk about training and I read through all the results, but, um, our structure really actually has changed over the years. I think it constantly has. I feel like if yeah, I were going to pat I, myself on the back, I feel like we've done a good job of navigating how hard this sport really is to, to do for a, a long time yeah. and around injuries, around aches and pains, around tweaks, all that stuff has been pretty solid. Yeah. I think for me too, it was just a change of what I've seen for nine years. Like the yeah. way Max would always write, like I knew how the progressions were going to look. Yeah. I knew what the strike numbers of how we would approach it would kind of look like. And I think it was just like, I just need to see something different regardless yeah. if it was even Max writing the whole thing. And they just told me it was yeah. Mike and Brandon. It's just like something refreshing to be like, what, what, yeah. even why are we doing this, these sets <laughs> of this stuff? We've never done this. So it was kind of, 
refreshing for me to be like, okay, this is something new. I got to focus. I got to pay more attention. Brandon. Does Brandon write the hardest workouts at TTT? Brandon probably writes the hardest CrossFit style interval, whatever you want to call it. Workouts I've probably ever done. They're EMOMs, but they're really they're not cons. EMON. They're not. They're they, mat cons that are just forced. He's to do. like every minute on the minute for 20 minutes. Is it more annoying? Seven, 17 nope. thrusters, 17 chest to bar, 17 bar facing burpees. <laughs> You'll have three seconds of recovery and do that for 20 minutes. And is you're it, like, huh? Is it annoying knowing that he would go out there and do it? Yeah. So then that, that means I knew he could do these things. So for me, I knew I had to complete them regardless if he did them separate yeah. and broke them down. I knew he would do them. So I couldn't go to him yeah. and be like, you can't do this. Or like, if you say this is impossible, then he'll actually just do he'll it. He'll go do prove. it. So yeah. I always knew anytime I'd have to do the session and I always did them and I got them done. And some of them, I think it was the first week I looked at Max and I was like, I don't know if I can keep doing like this hard of Matt cons. Like these are brutal. But then the second week I got better in third week. And then it was kind of then I don't want to say easy after that, but then you just kind of adapt. I haven't really exposed the elite path yet to that level. of. Yeah. Volume, I don't know if many people coming. can. <laughs> I mean, that I'm wondering was probably how, long, how long it could really be sustained. The really the only person that has shown like publicly that is handling that kind of stuff year round for Froning like, was Froning. Yeah. I mean, everybody else talks about time off, you know, gaining weight during certain periods of time, having off time. He's the only one that seems to just be like full throttle 24 seven. Yeah. I don't know. That's impressive. But I feel like you hit a point where you have to take a break. Yeah. But I think it's good. It was just a good change of pace for me. And I think that kind of fired me up and this is the strongest I've been ever. I feel like ever. Yeah. Ever back squatted four ninety, clean and jerk three sixty, snatch two ninety. And then I'm pretty close to those numbers daily. So yeah, consistently. For you me, did I feel like that's what'd you hit today? Six singles at two seventy? No, just two. Two. Oh yeah. two, six. You know it was three. It was only three at ninety two percent, ninety percent, whatever yeah. it was. But I think it's just kind of nice. And sometimes you just gotta change it up. I knew I didn't want to go somewhere else and find someone else to work with, regardless of how awkward at times it would get and frustrated, but I think this kind of helped. If you change did the, leave here, if you left and worked with a different coach. Who would it be? No. No, no, no. no. Now you got to <laughs> yeah, ask. Yeah. You can tell me, Trav. Don't tell him. What? I don't he's think. Gonna, I told him. I said, even if I, if I ever left, yeah, I, don't, do I think I would thing. just do my own thing. Yeah. I don't think I would ever go to someone else. Or if anything, I would honestly probably pull back what we've done over the last 10 years. I have every email or <laughs> document of, of all it. all the so, training. So I could just run back to that yeah. and modify it to what I need to improve upon for that. Mm. I was saying, do you think I'd stay here? I would like, if, I we, wonder if, I, if, if I was like, hey, yeah, like if you were working with another coach and we were here and they're like, oh yeah, uh, Travis, you know, uh, trains with whomever. If uh, I, I think I would leave. Yeah. I don't think you'd I feel be like here. I could, you can you <laughs> watch another man coach this guy yeah, or woman. It's too much emotions. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Yeah. But I wouldn't. Well, I mean, I could, but it would be hard. Want, I wouldn't want to. Yeah. I don't think I would. Yeah. I, I just wouldn't. I mean, I don't think there's many people that do what he does. Oh, so yeah. come on, fluff my ego before no, we're not going off. to come on. Tell everyone how great I am. <laughs> he does a very good job. It's not, now I kind of want to see that hire a different coach. <laughs> I want you want to see like, me heartbroken? Get the I want to be like that George Strait song. <laughs> you look so good. <laughs> enough. Yeah. Burn, yeah, yeah. Do you know, it's hard. That's a, it's a hard thing. If you actually genuinely care about somebody you're working with and they go work with somebody else when you're competitive as a coach, there's a big part of me uh, that I'd have to acknowledge that once like, fuck you. I hope you don't do well now if that happened. So that would be a hard thing to reconcile. You know, like I wouldn't want to have to do that. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. But I don't, I don't think that would happen because I'm not going anywhere. I mean, we've, we've had conversations where yeah, I'm, we're pretty clear on the boundaries now. And so what's your goal this year? Go ahead and say it. Podium. Podium. Where? Games. Oh yeah, baby. Where on the podium? I love the top. <laughs> if that happens, are you, do you already know in your head right now if you're going to keep going or is it once you've reached that goal now you could dial back or do you even? I, I haven't, I would just stop when my body says stop. <clears throat> and oh. whenever my mind is kind of like out of it, I think I would not that I'd be like, oh, I need to go out on a win or I need to go out on a loss. Like I think I want to walk away from a competition and be like, legitimately that was everything. And, I'm in my best shape saying that, not 
like, okay, well, I just yeah. wasn't trained well enough. And then I didn't perform as well. Like I want to be like at, in my best shape. And then if it's like, okay, I took 15th and like, this is the best I've ever felt. Then it's like, okay, maybe that's time to throw in the towel. But I think until that happens, have you ever, ever had a competition where you felt like you had a consistent block of great training lead in leading in and then executed in the moment at your best self? Probably Dubai. Dubai. Yeah, I took second. You, who won that? Fikowski? BKG. Oh, BKG. Was that the year I was there? No. No. That was the first year you went? Second. Yeah. You went three times? I've gone four. Four times. Oh, dang. Oh. First year was fifth. Second year, second. Third year, seventh. And then whatever happened this year. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. So we're heading into the open. Let's end it with this. Yep. What advice do you have for, I think most of our audience is when I did some polls on Instagram, they are, they've already done an open before. So they're on their second or more times in the open. Um, and what advice do you have for people going into the open this year? If you're trying to qualify top 10%, repeat as many times as you need to, to make it happen. <laughs> Um, if you're not as concerned with that, don't stress the open. I mean, at the end of the day, the leaderboard means absolutely nothing and everybody forgets about it the next day. So I don't, I get the this stress. Is coming from a top 10 guy. Are you a top 10 guy? Uh, I've top been, 20 guy. I've been top 10. I've been top three been top 20. So I've definitely had my share of the leaderboard, but I think over time it's just been stop checking the same thing as like your Instagram. Stop looking at it 500 times. Like, if you gave your best, that's it. Move on. There's nothing else you can do to change that. How many times in a day would you recommend people look? Zero? I'd say if if you're extremely paranoid, give yourself one in the morning, then one at night. Is that like, what you do? Do you ever look? I try not to look until like it's done because I know most people aren't putting them in anyway. So Most of the people that matter for you. Yeah, but I feel like we usually have a pretty good insight of other elite athletes and what they've gotten just from talking to them or sharing the knowledge of, Hey, this is what I got. This is what you got. All right, cool. And then you can kind of gauge where most people will probably be at. I feel like if you actually get on top of the podium at the games, you should do what Conor McGregor did the year where he thanked absolutely no one. Oh my God. <laughs> that was amazing. I, I want like to thank my sponsors. I, absolutely. I, I, no, no, he goes, I would like to thank absolutely no one. <laughs> that, that would be the greatest. It was I mean, weird seeing him be all polite this week. Yeah. yeah. And he, and yeah, but I think he you gotta, also you does evolve, that. Though. Like he, yeah. but I still think deep down, like he's going to always trash talk and always do what he does kind of naturally. But yeah. then every time he has, has lost, he's always been a pretty good. No, no, but this time he was nice heading in into the, the fight. Yeah. 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 But I think, cause he respected him. Yeah. I feel like yeah, I, but I also think that, yeah. had this been five years ago, it wouldn't have, he wouldn't have. Yeah. He well, I mean, even if he you start having him. kids, man, things change. I know. You change a different perspective. I, I think it's good that he evolved. If you yeah. just keep being that same, do you like think, me, I've been an asshole for years. It's like, fuck, dude, come on. Do you think the evolution it was detrimental to him as a fighter? That's a good question, but we'll yeah. never know. Yeah. I don't I know. We'll wondering. find out if he I, keeps fighting. We'll yeah. find out. Because it could just I'm, be age too. Like, you know. He's getting older. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just there's a lot of variables. And just fights are fights. Yeah. You get kicked you a get little bit beat. too many times in one leg and you can't oh. stand up. And I have crutches. But yeah, he's always done a good job with, I feel like accepting the loss and then admitting like, yeah, I didn't do very well and he's been I'm going to go humble. back. Yeah. But he's uh, also pretty good. I wish good you talked like him. Give me a Connor impression. <laughs> no, no. Close the We're podcast with you wishing everybody good luck in the open. <laughs> and with Connor McGregor. Irish. Irish. All of you <laughs> do horrible in the open. <laughs> no, no, no. I meant with an Irish accent. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. He's Irish, right? Yeah. 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 Irish. Don't, who's your Irish client? Neil. Neil. Maybe we can get but him Northern here. Ireland does not sound the same. I think uh, Connor's from Dublin, I think. All I know is that his whiskey tastes same. like shit. And it it's had probably a lot come of down here and punch you for it. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> you probably, it wouldn't, it wouldn't if you did, it. you'd get paid. <laughs> yeah. And it wouldn't make it suck any less. Yeah, no. I think I'd rather a punch than to drink that again. <laughs> All right. On that uh, note, everybody, thank you for listening. Follow the Travis Mayor at at the Travis Mayor. Correct. 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 Do correct. You have Let's to, build the following, people. Come on, give me a follow. What sponsors do you want? Let's put it out right yeah. now. Who do you want? Can I? Can, uh, can we go can Pampers? Say that? Why not Pampers? Yeah, that'd be great, dude. Pampers. Why is get it, this man? Why is it some diaper? Who else? Any diaper company sponsoring should, that the guy with be four butts? Yeah. yeah. Because you can make food. funny posts like "Had another shitty workout." <laughs> with a, you know, <laughs> you know the, the opportunities are crazy. Red Bull. Baby food is a good one because mm. sometimes you can eat that in competition to keep oh, digestion perfect. good. Perfect. Right, so Gerber. 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 No, 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 yeah, just Gerber. baby food. Don't limit yourself yeah, to Gerber because yeah. 
That's true. There's other people yeah. that want to branch Maybe out. Maybe there's like an organic. Off brand. You know, yeah, yeah. They might be into it. So any baby foods. Yeah. Baby diapers. Red Bull. We'll Are there any, Red Bull though. Is there yeah. like any tattoo stuff like lotion or something that people <laughs> who have tattoos lotion? on a regular basis? <laughs> hey, you I know, don't know. Yeah. I've never looked into that. All right. Yeah. So we got baby food, Red Bull. Do you do anything to manicure your beard? Uh, nope. You just all natural. This is all natural. Maybe all the a, white, all the yeah, white. Yeah. Here. Maybe just for men would be a, no, you should get manscaped. It's just for men. Die. Yeah. Yeah. So just so you for get men. What are you trying to say? I need to diet. No, you could do whatever you want, but if somebody was willing to pay you to diet, I they would were die. Like, yes. Yeah, so I would die. There you go. What do you need? You need a pink? <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> anybody else? Any other legit sponsors that you would want? Watches. I mean, I have pretty cool. Like, oh. Who are your yeah, sponsors they, right now? They, Give they them a have, plug. Gillette, mm, the best all day freshness, best a man can get. I uh, use Old Spice. No, Crea Pure, Jumping Rope, Victory Grips. Had a boy, and that's it. All right, <laughs> let's just pick a button, random button to end the podcast. There you have it, everyone. I'm going to end this exactly at one hour. Wow. <laughs>